What's up YouTube, Mike here again. And today I want to talk about the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. And this is the 13 inch variant. If you're a fan of my channel or if you watched videos before, you know I've tested the 15 inch variant of this. And um, this is essentially gonna be very similar to it. Um, but let's get to it. So first thing really, obviously um, build quality. Really no change from the 15 inch variant. This thing is just beautifully built. I mean, I just, I don't know that you could really find a, another laptop that's quite as, um, I guess, good looking and just the quality of this, honestly. It's, I mean, a solid piece of aluminum. I mean, you love or hate Apple, you can't fault the hardware, but I mean, really no change from the 15 inch. You still got your four type USB-C ports on this, which honestly, having used either the 15 inch 2016 with touch bar or this one for the last uh, month, I've been using it and I've, it really does not bother me at all. Actually, I'm starting to like the USB type C's just because of the versatility to it. I love being able to charge this with a, any external ba battery pack. I mean, it works well, it trickle charges and, um, it's good to go. It just really, I mean, it works like it should. So honestly, I haven't had any issues with that whatsoever. And the SD card slot thing, that kind of bugged me at first with the 15 inch, but I really can't realize that I really use it because I'll use either a reader then plug it in, or I'll plug my camera directly into my computer. And I already got a dongle, so I'm good there. So really one dongle is all I personally need. So for me, the ports have actually not been an issue. So, but the reason I actually switched to this over the 15 inch is ultimately the price. Now, if you buy this brand new from Apple or Best Buy or wherever, it's basically gonna be 1800 bucks for this. So this is the i5, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. So with the touch bar, this is the base model. Now the next step up is everything's the same except it's a 512, um, gigabytes of storage, but the biggest reason I switched to this is the price. Now I was lucky on this. I didn't have to pay retail. If you pay $1,800 for this, then I think it's way too much and honestly not worth it. So I would recommend you go either to apple.com and look in the refurbished section because these are in there now. Um, shop Amazon or what I did, I went to Best Buy. My local Best Buy, almost once a week I go in there and I check their return stuff and this happened to be in there so i got this for over 350 dollars off of retail so i paid around 1400 dollars for this which is still yes a lot of money but it's not as terrible if you look at what you're getting as far as the build quality and stuff so i mean i'd still like it to be a little less but um i felt pretty good about it just because i saved about 350 dollars. so um, would i pay retail for this absolutely not but I have to say, I'm really enjoying this. I mean, the battery life so far has been about the same as the 15 inch model. I mean, really a good solid eight hours. I think even though Apple will say 10, really not the case, but I've been getting them about eight hours. I mean, I've really had no issue with battery. And again, like I said, with the USB type C in my little tech bag, I have a uh, fairly large power bank that I carry in my bag. So if I do need to juice this up, I could just plug it in, plug it right into the USB-C and get the power that I need. So honestly, uh, battery life is pretty good. I have not had an issue with it at all. And one of my favorite features of this actually has been the ability to unlock it with my Apple Watch. Now, if you've got a newer generation, even a MacBook Air, you can do that. But that's honestly been one of my favorite features. Like this has got Touch ID, but I really don't use it because when I open my computer up, you'll see it unlocks with my Apple Watch and there it is. I don't have to do anything. So that's one of the features I really like about um, Apple lately. But um, again, I do video editing for this channel. Obviously, I shoot all my video in 4K for the most part. I've been kind of playing around with 1080p, 60 frames a second, but this video is in 1080p. My last couple videos have been I'm sorry, this one's in 4K. My last couple have been 4K and I edited them on this machine. So that was kind of my worry going from the 15 inch to the 13 inch was the ability to edit 4K video. Now I'm using Final Cut Pro, which I love. 
because I'm coming from Premiere Pro. And again, Premiere Pro, you can still do a lot more stuff, but for my personal needs, I'm never going to use 90% of it. But um, to me, Final Cut Pro is it's a lot more of a simpler interface, to be honest with you, and just the efficiency. Final Cut Pro is constantly rendering the video in the background, whereas Adobe Premiere Pro, it doesn't do it till the end. So you got longer export times. But with this, editing 4K video, like I said, this is the base model. Scrubbing within the timeline has been smooth as butter. And I'll try and see if I can throw some uh, B-roll showing that. If not, oh well, I'm just telling you that it works. But scrolling, scrubbing in the timeline, I have not noticed any lag whatsoever. And I'm shooting again with a Lumix G7 4K video at uh, 30 frames per second. And the timeline within Final Cut Pro on this thing is butter. Now I will tell you with the 15 inch, the background rendering, because if you've got a quad core i7 and you've got uh, dedicated graphics, the background rendering is way faster on the 15 inch model. So that translates to faster exports. So honestly, I can tell you that the 15 inch model is twice as fast. So obviously if you're running a business and time is money, then you're going to want to go with the 15 inch model. But if you're just like me, a, you know, this is a hobby editing videos. I usually only edit maybe once, twice a week as far as videos. And this is just fine. Like I said, working within the timeline, smooth as butter, no matter how many layers transitions I use, no issues. And the export time is, not terrible you know so for instance if i have a 10 minute 4k video if i let it render in the background to 100 percent and then i do my export it's really only going to take me about 15 minutes max to export a 10 minute 4k video now if i edit it really fast so if you're really fast at editing and it doesn't have time to render all the way when you do your export, that time is going to be added on there. So then it might take you 30 minutes to do a 10 minute 4K video. But again, you can always do something else. So if you're not in a time crunch, you know, watch TV, do whatever, or surf the internet, watch YouTube videos, it'll eventually get done. And it's not terrible. So to be honest with you, it is very usable, no issue with it. But again, if you're doing 20, 30 minute 4K videos, then obviously you're going to want the 15 inch model. But my videos are usually only about 10 minutes max, and this honestly is perfect for it if you're using Final Cut Pro. Like I said, with the 15 inch video, if you're using Premiere Pro, don't buy a Mac, get a PC, to be honest with you. But I have to say though, that I'm really loving this. And the reason, the other reason I went with this besides the money was the form factor. I love how compact, how light, how thin this thing is. I mean, it is just, it really is a piece of art to be honest with you but this fits in my little tech bag that i use and no issues it's light i carry it with me everywhere i go as far as when i go to work if i go to the coffee shop and i'm starting a class soon and i plan on using this as my primary machine for that so um, i'm i really have nothing but good things to say about this so my only caveat like i said is do not pay retail so unless you just got money to burn I mean, it's not worth $1,800, I'll tell you straight up. But if you can save a couple hundred bucks, in my case, I saved 350 bucks, then it is totally worth it. I would recommend it. Now, obviously, Microsoft is coming out with the Surface Laptop, which is kind of comparable depending on what specs you get. I mean, this is way more expensive if you pay retail, to be honest with you, for the same specs in the upcoming um, Surface Laptop. But again, the reason that I am went with this is because I love Final Cut Pro 10. I mean, I have really fell in love with that editing program, and I just like the Apple ecosystem. So with that, I mean, like I said, if you guys have any questions on this computer or even the 15-inch one, shoot it in comments below. But like I said, overall, I got to say, if you don't play, pay retail, that this is definitely a buy. So enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you've not subscribed please go ahead and do so thanks